Neptune Wellness Solutions is a health and wellness products company founded in 1998 and is headquartered in Laval, Canada. The company is engaged in the extraction, purification, and formulation of science-based products. Neptune Wellness offers specialty ingredients such as Maximil, a patented ingredient that enhances the absorption of lipid-based nutraceuticals and various other marine and seed oils. In January, Neptune Wellness received its Health Canada license to process cannabis, which allows the company to manufacture and purify cannabis extracts and cannabis oil, and to sell its services to other license holders. Production activities are expected to start soon at Neptune's 50,000 square foot certified facility in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Neptune Wellness Solutions is listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ and trades under the ticker symbol NEPT. I'm joined now by Jim Hamilton, CEO of Neptune Wellness. Jim, welcome back. Jim, it's great to be back. <laughs> Jim's already together again. Yes. You know, the last time I was here, I think it was Valentine's Day. Oh. And you weren't here. I was heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Jim. Yeah. You probably didn't yeah. give me enough notice yeah. on that. I would never have left you alone <laughs> on Valentine's Day. But a lot of change, again, to the, to the studio since I was here last, including you got a new haircut. And, well, uh, that's, that's, that's I, I tend to get those every once in a yeah. while. Um, but if the, let's not, this is not about me. Let's talk about you. Uh, yeah. Neptune's, the stock price has really turned yeah. uh, in a great performance, especially since uh, the beginning of the year. And obviously that's at least in part driven by some of the moves you've made in the last few months. Uh, most recently, you announced that uh, Martin Landry has become Chief of Corporate Development. Martin Landry, for, formerly of GMP. Yeah, that's oh. correct. That's, correct. <laughs> that's, that's a great yeah. strategy. Yeah. Hire the bankers. Yeah. Um, but uh, probably more pertinent to the actual business is uh, you've, you've acquired a hemp processor, Sugarleaf Labs. Correct. Now, just for clarity's sake, this is not the Sugarleaf cannabis company that is operating true. in California and Oregon and Washington. No, very, 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 very true. Uh, uh, James, just uh, from where we started here, what's gone on since the new year? A lot. I think it's since the last time we were on your show. First of all, we were happy to get our, our license in Canada and we've started processing and, and uh, the plant is uh, up and running. We've had the addition of a couple of uh, really great people to our team, one of whom you just mentioned, Martin Landry, who those in this industry know very, very well is, is really the lead and, and one of the uh, the first great industry analysts and mm -hmm. we're happy to have him on board to help us with strategy and, uh, and I guess uh, I won't be calling things. him for an interview anytime <laughs> soon at least not for the GMP context. Uh, also uh, the addition of a, a wonderful uh, gentleman Dr. Graham Wood who is really probably one of the foremost clinicians in the cannabis space here in Canada who's been doing a lot of the clinical work not only in application forms but on the clinical side has joined us to lead our, our as chief scientific officer which is a great addition and lastly uh, as you just mentioned uh, the addition of uh, Sugar Leaf Labs. They're based uh, just outside of Charlotte and mm -hmm. North Carolina, and they're in the hemp processing business. Uh, so, James, you know, when we've been looking, we believe a lot in the, the opportunity that, that exists in America. We love Canada, but we, we love the opportunity that exists in America. And um, with the, uh, the Farm Bill coming through, um, both the NASDAQ and the TSX, our insurance companies and, and bankers have been uh, supportive. And so we're very happy we announced that transaction just uh, last week. Mm -hmm. um, so hemp, the acquisition of a hemp uh, processor is obviously to service the, uh, the, 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 the value chain in terms of having your own processor in, in the vertical sort of lineup. Well, yeah, and look, um, James, we're not on the vertical. We're more interested in the horizontal, so we're not huh. cultivators, as maybe mentioned to you before, that we don't have comp competency in cultivation, but we have a legacy of decades in extraction, you know, the purification and formulation of delivery forms mm -hmm. and clinical research. This is what our omega-3 hmm. uh, business and nutrition products business uh, was built on. And uh, similarly with uh, uh, Sugar Leaf Labs in, in uh, the United States, they're not cultivators, but uh, we love them for, for so many reasons. One, uh, they are based in North Carolina, the heart of the Tobacco Belt. We think the Tobacco Belt will be a very uh, interesting region to be, be located in. Uh, they have great contacts with the, the agri community there, uh, which is very uh, powerful. So we think the, the climate and the agri infrastructure of the Tobacco Belt will be very uh, conducive to this, this business. Uh, they also have large scale extraction uh, that they have built and, and have brought online as we speak, 1,500 metric tons worth. 
And where I think they saw value in us was a couple of ways. One is, I think people in this industry in the United States don't have a full uh, appreciation for the quality control standards that CPG companies are looking for. And in fact, when we first arrived and we're talking to them, they thought we were a little bit crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then they said other customers came through and we realized you weren't crazy. This right. is what CPG industry needs. I think they very much appreciated our connectivity to the big brands and CPG companies in the United States in health and wellness and food, and that was very powerful. And I think they also appreciated the fact that we were uh, listed both on the NASDAQ and the, and the TSX. So, so great synergy and competencies and, and a great opportunity to, to bring them together. And I'm a big believer in uh, this industry in the United States. Um, again, I think I mentioned uh, uh, James when we've been together before. It's, it's uh, larger than the vitamin E segment. It's on track to be larger than the omega-3 mm -hmm. uh, sector, and I, I think it's a major consumer product uh, a category. We're also happy to have a footprint in the United States. Should marijuana ever become federally legal, right. uh, we'll be able to quickly adapt uh, to that. Right. So. so is the opportunity now for Neptune more or less uh, completely focused on the CBD industry that has obviously transformed since it received a, uh, a, a, a different listing from it's no longer part of the prohibited substance at Zach, now it's, now it's a regulated substance. So, I've, I mean, we've just seen an explosion in the, in the different types and uh, modes of CBD available. Is that where Neptune's going to be dominant? Uh, James, we see our Canadian operation in our facility just outside of Montreal for, I'll call it, um, regulated markets, you know, such as Canada and, and, and markets that are kind of a, um, akin to that, mm -hmm. like, like Europe, so where it's highly controlled, regulated, and that will be CBD and, and, and THC uh, marijuana. Um, we see America for America. Uh, we don't see moving things across the Canadian border in the United States. We see this as American footprint for, for America, and we see a lot of opportunity there. I think the CBD market also is a very, very interesting market when you look at it, because ultimately it will be for chronic consumption. It's, it's not going to be for when we're together or, 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 or to relax, but it will be for things like pain, mm -hmm. inflammation, anxiety that you'll, you'll probably consume on a, on a daily basis. Yeah, that's interesting. I have started consuming CBD on mm. a daily basis, yes. uh, as much as for an experiment to just right. see what the what the effects are. Um, but because I've noticed since I have been doing it that recovery time from workouts are in fact as represented faster. Uh, my ability to concentrate for long periods of time on single tasks has miraculously manifested itself Which once again. something, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so just those things alone, and gastrointestinal reliability, I'm going to call it, uh, mm -hmm. have, have made me sort of consider this as a legitimate dietary supplement personally. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm a very much aligned with the way you think that, you know, CBD is the, is the near term but you're, you're saying you've also got great opportunities in THC in regulated markets. So is that, is that targeting more the pharmaceutical pres prescription? Uh, uh, James, I, I, my belief ultimately, and, and actually one of the reasons we initially got into cannabis, because we see this really as a natural products and health products business primarily. And it doesn't mean CBD is, is uh, uh, separate and distinct from THC. I think ultimately we'll see combinations and formulations mm -hmm. as science uh, presents itself in terms of what, what is ideal. I think in the CBD market, in, in the CPG world, we'll see a lot of combination products that will be labeled as hemp initially in the United States, but it will be hemp with melatonin, hemp with omega-3s. Mm. And they'll use the structure function claims that go with omega-3s you know, for healthy you know, bones and joints or, or, or inflammation, what have you. And uh, that will be how the, the products ultimately will be positioned. And um, so we're very excited by that. I think in the controlled markets, we'll see something similar, but maybe THC being, being sure. more, of a, more of an element there. Sure, so is your, is your acquisition of Sugar Leaf Labs then designed to uh, control costs in the supply chain as it pertains to creating concentrated isolates as ingredients for your products? Uh, James, um, we're first and foremost a B2B company. Uh, actually, Sugar Leafs does have a, a small branded business called Forest uh, Remedies that we'll have to uh, think through how we, we play that. But first and foremost, we're a B2B company. And I think when we look at this industry, whether it be Canada, cannabis, or CBD America, it will be ultimately dominated by CPG brands. Mm -hmm. And CPG brands are, are rarely um, backwardly integrated into the ingredient. Uh, they depend on, on, on great ingredient companies like DSM, BASF, Lonza, and others to, to support their business. And I think that's probably, there's no reason to think this industry won't be different in, in, in future.
Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so the cost of products that you produce, you're, when you say you're B2B, does that mean you're selling your products on a, on a, on a uh, white label basis to other businesses? Yeah, James, I, I think um, first and, and foremost, we, we process into, into pure, pure uh, active compound, if you okay. will. And like we do in our nutrition business today, we can take that further and put it into the delivery form, in the bottle, and, and in the label. Some um, CPG companies like the turnkey solution. Uh, others that have that infrastructure will take the take the ingredient. It really depends on what is what is best for the for the customer. But I think that is sort of the normal CPG model today. And mm -hmm. I think it'll be a, it's not either or, but it'll be a combination. Of their own. I see. So if I'm a uh, CPG focused. <laughs> Uh, business right. in the medical and wellness space and I have existing distribution for products and now I want to add the CBD component. Does that mean I can come to Neptune and and that's the business is that you create the products for us and can package and can white label if necessary or whatever element yeah. of that you need to. Okay, you know it's taken me a little while, but I finally understand your business. The CBD is working. <laughs> CBD is having an effect. Um, awesome. Okay, so now in that context, what is the what is the landscape look like for you competitively? I think again, there, there's two things. I think in uh, the Canadian cannabis context, uh, James, uh, competitively licensed in January, um, we have a, a facility that is built and uh, constructed. Initial licensing is online and working, and uh, pending amendments. What's important in our Canadian facility is we have expandability that is up to six thousand tons. This is what was we were extracting omega three krill oil on, and we can grow into that. Um, and we're taking a, a hard look at that today as we speak. And one could say, one, why would anyone ever need that kind of uh, capacity? But I think if you look at the demand profile in, in Canada and in regulated markets, it's underserved today. I think there's a lot of interesting runway being laid out because of the pending legislation for other edibles and, and whatnot. And remember, we're 80% weed in Canada today, mm -hmm. and it, every reason to believe we'll start to pattern after California and Colorado in the future where the majority will be built on some kind of extract. And I think that negates consideration for hemp uh, demand. 7% of Americans are taking CBD hemp now on a, really? on a regular basis. It's a major And what, what's, what's, what's the sort of the, where, where was it at, say, a year ago? Uh, much smaller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's bigger than vitamin E and it's on track to, to be as much as omega-3. So in Canada, okay. I think the, the demand profile is, is underserved today and it will be underserved for, for a period of time. I think in the United States, so that, that's good news and, uh, and we're happy to be, be part of that. I think in the United States where, where the, the uh, frustration with major brands today is, is they can't get the conversation they need relative to the quality, stability and traceability of the product. Mm -hmm. And one could argue that's probably normal because if you were a marijuana person, there was never a requirement in, in your business before. But if you're going to be on the wall, on the shelves at CVS, or Walmart, or in, in Whole Foods, you're gonna have to come with a product that is pure you're in a, and consistent, so it's 25 milligrams, every bottle, every pill, every capsule, every uh, every gummy, and it's gonna have to be shelf stable, and it's gonna have to taste good, and uh, all those good things. And, all the and things it, that you've been doing for decades. And I think, uh, James, I, I think that is the conversation that the major brands are looking for today. Right. And they have, it doesn't mean other companies won't get there, and as they continue to recognize that, but we think that's a great advantage in the near term is our connectivity to CPG and our appreciation for how that works. Right, interesting. Well, that sounds like you're really uh, executing a well thought out strategy, Jim, and it's reflected in your share price, which is the best endorsement there is. So let's leave the conversation there for now and I'll look forward to ha following up with you probably sooner rather than yeah. later. Thanks for joining me James, today. thanks for having us. You bet.